And out of all of that, what I've been feeling into is what does it mean to be a 21st century tantrika? Um, because historically, tantra as a path was the word not hereditary it's not quite the right word but in order to in order to call yourself a tantrika you needed to actually be initiated into tantra you had a teacher or a guru guru in tantra just simply means teacher it doesn't necessarily a guru doesn't necessarily mean in tantra someone who is fully awake um, in tantra the word guru or guru is recognized as a function not a person and what that means is that a teacher or anyone in the community for that matter can access that stream of consciousness you could say that function of guru and allow it to flow through them in a way that supports other people accessing that so historically that's what guru meant is is a teacher who is able to access that function for the benefit for the well-being of their students so you were initiated you worked very closely with the teacher. It was an intimate relationship. And teachers usually only had, you know, a, small, a handful of students, five or 10 students. And initially, students would often go and live with the teacher in that teacher's ordinary householder life. And I can sense the reason for that is that if you are living with someone who is orientated to awareness, awake, and has methodologies and systems for liberating themselves from conditioning and is enjoying life, there's a certain transmission. There's a, that way of being in the world feels different and is different. And so by living with the teacher, what would be transmitted would be really powerful. And I imagine would just give the student the most robust foundation of practices and view teachings and techniques so that when the student then went back into their ordinary householder life, they had this firm foundation to live as a tantrika with the view teachings, with the practices, in order to orientate to the three goals, awakening, liberation, enjoyment, and the process, right, the process would just continue to unfold. Now, here in the 21st century, we don't necessarily have access to a guru or a teacher who will initiate us into the path and whom we can go and live with for six months or a year. Even, you know, it's even difficult to find an ashram as such. And so when I'm feeling into this, I'm like, okay, what is a 21st century tantrika? And I look at my own journey and I can see that what's unfolded for me is that I met a teacher, Christopher Tompkins, who introduced me to Tantra, who he gave me a practice which I was actually initiated into that practice. I don't even know what that means though. Um, and I have reached out to Christopher to ask him, but he hasn't responded to me yet. I'll let you know if I ever get the word. And I took that practice and I started doing that practice regularly and then committed to it in 2015 to doing a thousand days. And then around three years after that, I really started diving into the view teachings of Tantra. And once I had those view teachings, I started to realize it was like a map for what I'd already been experiencing on the spiritual path. And so now I've been living out those view teachings and I've been doing the Tantra Yoga practice consistently daily for you know a number of years after having a long history of yoga practices and seeking. And even though I don't actually work with anyone that I would consider um, to say a real teacher, I don't know if that's the right way to put it. My sense is that I'm doing the, the best I can to orientate to reality from the perspective of a tantrika based on my understanding of the view teachings and based on using the practices. So for me, what a 21st tantrika then becomes is someone who is willing to make this their priority in life doesn't mean you don't have a family doesn't mean you don't have a job but there's a recognition that nothing is more important than awakening to the essence of what you are nothing is more important than liberating yourself from conditioning and nothing is more important than genuinely enjoying life with the recognition that all of those things actually support 
better relationships, better family life, a better um, relationship with career, just, just better living, full stop. So once there's that prioritization of, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to liberate. I'm going to enjoy. Then a 21st century Tantrika reads or works with translations of, of course, the original text. So they work with original view teachings and have an understanding of what those view teachings are. And they practice on a daily basis, not just formal seated practice, but also integrated practices and secondary attention practices. And through that, through the view teachings, through the orientation to the goals and through practicing, my sense is that what I've noticed in my direct experience is I feel this connection to, to Tantra as a stream of consciousness. And I feel like I'm constantly surrendering to orientating to life from a Tantric perspective. It's like I've given myself over to Tantra. Um, and that's, that's the primary orientation to life. And so I was like, well, does it matter then that there is no specific teacher? Does it matter that I haven't been initiated? I don't think it does because the, the fruits will, re will reveal themselves and I'm noticing, seeing, feeling the fruits in my day-to-day -day existence. So my intention then as a teacher with the creation of 21st century Tantrika and the Tantrika's toolbox is to provide people what they need so that if they decide, yeah, I really want to live out this path, I want to awaken, I want to liberate, I want to enjoy life, that they have everything they need and it's really grounded in historically accurate teachings and practices. And that's critical. At the same time, what I'm noticing too in terms of practice is that Practices have underlying principles or mechanisms by which they work directly with consciousness, they work with energy, they work with the um, heart-mind layer, so thoughts and feelings. And so as I'm beginning to understand these underlying principles and these underlying mechanisms, what I notice is that a practice will arise in the moment that feels appropriate to what's going on that I may not officially have learned from another tantric teacher like Christopher Tompkins or Christopher Wallace, for example, or that I may not have read about in one of the um, source texts, right? So the recognition sutras, for example, or the Shiva sutras. But that practice still feels beneficial and aligned with tantra. Let me give you a direct example. Right now I'm practicing turning my heater up because it's cold here. Um, How's that secondary practice going for you, right? Just check in and see, are you still inhaling down to the pelvic floor? Are you still exhaling to the earth? Inhaling back to pelvic floor and exhaling up to the crown. So that, I mean, that is an example of a practice that in the moment, at the beginning of class, when I could feel that uh, my energy felt like it was kind of a bit like this. And it was like, oh, I, my desire is to ground and center more. And so out of that desire to ground and center, that was the breath that just came to me. It's like, right, let's just inhale strongly down to pelvic floor. And then exhale down into the earth. Really connect, open the gates of the root to the earth. And as soon as I do that, like I just get a sense of like, ah. Oh, and then inhaling back up, gathering the energy of the earth into the belly, I feel like a sense of nourishment and a sense of calm. And then as I exhale and just release up through the crown, it feels like any excess energy is just released. And the mechanisms of that practice feels like it works in terms of shifting the physiological experience of reality. Another example is... So last night, there was a situation unfolding that in the past I've found potentially triggering. And it's been, it's been quite a big one that I've been working with for a while. And I have digested a lot of the samskaras, undigested emotional experience related to that. And last night when it was happening, I was like, okay, 
I just sat down in front of the fire and practiced. I'd already done my formal practice for the day just earlier. So I sat back down into practice and I spontaneously found myself inquiring and asking a question and just dropping that question over and over and over into the field. And I, there was so much focus, so much focus. And asking that question just kept me in this state of complete surrender to the moment rather than what had been happening, which was fear would start to arise and rejection of resistance to the moment, because in the past, that kind of situation had triggered old stuff. The practice, the inquiry I was working with was nothing more than asking myself over and over, what is love? And occasionally it would come through, I think it was an 80s song or a 90s song, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. That one, not the best singer, but you get the gist. And I would just sit there and I would just, what is love? And I'd sit in the question, right? Just sit in the question and sit in the question. And doing that last night was incredibly beneficial and so powerful. It felt like there was just absolute orientation to awareness and there was no fear arising. And that, and that was, situation was amazing. Now that particular practice, again, haven't learned from a teacher, haven't learned out of a text and yet the principle of the practice to use inquiry to sit in the unknown to listen with the whole body to know that the answer does not come in words that those underlying principles you can use almost any inquiry there and so to sit in what is love what I noticed was as the situation continued to unfold and I needed to engage with people, is that I spontaneously and naturally found myself moving from a place of relaxed ease and love, rather than what had been happening in the past, moving from a space of fear and control. And this to me feels incredibly beneficial and useful in the 21st century, that practice itself is seen as an alive, living response to what is happening in the moment not to transcend and escape what is happening not to suppress what is happening but to simply fully meet what is happening in such a way that old stuff from the past which that's the essence of conditioning right whether it's emotional residue samskaras or whether it's thought constructs vikalpas old stuff from the past can be devoured digested and dissolved what I noticed after doing that practice for probably half an hour and 45 minutes or six, right, is that afterwards, I was so clear. There was just clearness. And it was like, oh, clearness. All righty. So that's what I'm feeling into right now in terms of what does it mean to be 21st century Tantrika? How do I or we as a community, honour lineages, honour teachers, honour the texts and the historical roots of Tantra, right? Recognising it started in 5th century AD, went underground around the 13th century. How do we honour that whilst at the same time recognising that some of the conditions that gave rise to Tantra are no longer happening in a 21st century life? And as a teacher, that's where I'm going to be exploring and playing. And that's where I'm going to teach from with clarity in terms of what I'm making up, in essence, right? Oh, this is a practice that came to me here and it follows these tantric principles, but it doesn't come from a text, like clarity over sources and also referencing which teachers things came through to honor the teachers, which text things came through. And then, right, from that, my desire or my vision is that a community of Tantrikas can arise. Both, um, I'm based in New Zealand, and so here in New Zealand, there is a physical community of people um, who've done my trainings and some of the other things that I do. So they're starting together and also here online. And so what happens when there's a community of Tantrikas that begins to gather online and in person and begin to engage with each other socially as tantrikas. Now, what begins to happen then? 
Um, so that's what I'm really curious about. 